Welcome back to welcome welcome black. Welcome black. <laughs> Welcome back to Blinker Fluid TV, where we bring all the nitty gritty, the badass cars, trucks, SUVs. You know you did it. <laughs> I guess I did. We bring everything that you want to know right here to one place. Uh, all cars, trucks, SUVs, everything. And today, we're going electrified. A little bit different of a, of a, of a channel, uh, a little bit of a different video today. And I'm pretty excited. Are you excited? Well, we're not. This channel is not only all about electrics, but but all the news right now, everything new and exciting is about electrics. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the top five manufacturers that you might not know about that are producing electric cars right now. Six. We're going to do six. Oh boy, he's I threw one in there. But the best part about this is we're going to go through them. We're going to touch a little bit on the individual cars. A couple of the manufacturers have more than one car, which is really cool. And. Uh, before we do that, though, we want to make sure you take a few seconds to subscribe to our channel and make sure that you get all the notifications, so click the notification bell. You want our stuff in your inbox. Well, this is the start of what we're doing. This is the starting right. point. We're going to give you a little bits and, and just tease you a little bit today about what's coming sure. out and have follow videos that are more in-depth on each one of these vehicles. So stick around. At the very end of the video, we'll tell you a little bit about what we think is going to be the best fit for you. And uh, definitely make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what your favorite is because if we get enough comments on certain cars, we'll definitely do more in-depth videos with that specific car. So let us know what your favorite is. And uh, Brian, we're going to get started, I guess, right? Let's do it. So number one on the list is? Rivian. Rivian. This is a company I've been pretty excited about as I've learned more about them. They're beautiful cars. Well, they've got two different vehicle offerings coming out right now. Well, three different trim lines in two different vehicles. Yeah. Okay. So you've got a truck called the R1T. And it's beautiful. Starts at about sixty-nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You've got the SUV starts at seventy-two-five. It's called the R1S. Now the interesting thing about both these vehicles are basically based on the same platform. They use the same battery. Yeah, it's like a skateboard kind of thing. Yes. So essentially, yeah. the R1S is just a SUV version of the truck, right? They're basically the same same vehicle. Both have quad motors. They can and spin in place ready. like a tank. Now, I don't know how often you're going to use that, but it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Come on, dude. Go find a field or a uh, gravel parking lot and see if you don't can do, do it. it. <laughs> My mom will not want you to do that. <laughs> but that's not why you're going to buy it. it yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Really quick, they've got three battery options, 105 kilowatt, 135 kilowatt, and 180. And that's pretty big. I mean, when you compare it to like a, a, a Model Y, or sorry, Model X, I mean, your, your biggest battery capacity there is like 100, 100 kilowatt hours. Yes. So, I mean, we're talking about- Tesla's double. been very good about getting efficiency. They're ridiculously good. That. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, we still have no numbers on the Cybertruck, and that's, I guess, really kind of where this started, is I, I feel like, and for so long, Tesla's kind of been in the forefront of everything that's going on, electric. Like, when you think electric car, who do you think of? You think of Tesla, but Tesla's going well. I feel like there's definitely some sneak attacks coming, and Rivian is one of those companies that's coming up, and they're coming up strong. I mean, they're I I, I like the look of the Rivian better. It's a great look. Yeah, we'll share some pictures with you for sure. So level three autonomous tech, love it. Okay, your battery packs are talked about. The yes. ranges of those are 230, 300, and 400 miles. Which you know, nothing to sneeze at. 400 is not bad. bad. I mean, that'll get you pretty more where you want to go. For sure. You can't go much further than that without having to stop and use the restroom. It's so, true. Or I mean, take a lunch break, whatever it is, especially if you got kids. You get fatigued. You got I mean, kids, man. They can't last 200 sure. miles. So now the, the middle the middle level, the 135 kilowatt, is the fastest one. Zero to 60 really? of three seconds. <laughs> Not bad for a truck. And remember the pricing on these. Okay, so again, R1T, the truck starts at 69000 Okay. The SUV is a little more expensive, seventy two five. Perfect. We don't know the top ranges yet. They haven't really announced all their their different pricing yet. That's coming out. Now, they're working on the vehicles now. They're still retrofitting their uh, plant they bought, an old Mitsubishi plant that's outside of Chicago. Yeah, yeah. They're still working on that. I think they're getting close. Production starts late this year. They're hoping to deliver their first vehicles later this year. 2020. And I think one thing that some people don't realize is that the starting price that they quoted initially is actually coming in lower than they suggested. Coming in lower. They were they wanted, looking at 80 grand. They want to compete with the Cybertruck. And I think they're, I don't think they're going to come quite that low, no. but 
there'll be low enough people will have something, you know, another offering. So, but it's an intriguing yeah. company. I mean, they're definitely trying to compete with Tesla because mm -hmm. they've teased. We don't know a lot of details, but they're going to be building their own charging network. In, and they'll be teaming up with, I believe, Electri Electrify America. Which is so a different option. they're going to have different options to charge yeah. these. So, And they've got a subscription model. I mean, it may not be for everybody, but look, if you let's say you, you buy a Rivian and you love it, uh -huh. and you're sold on Rivian, you might you're going to want to own the rest of your life. That's true. So why not get a, a new one every three years mm -hmm. and all the maintenance is taken care of? Yeah, for 700 bucks a month. Yeah. 700 bucks. I don't know. It's intriguing. Yeah, cool. Number two? All right, so Atlas, also coming out with a truck very similar to the Rivian. And by the way, these are both in America. These are both American companies, which Just is mention pretty that. cool. Both assembled in the USA. Well, That's Rivian's what, yeah. out of uh, the Detroit area. Yeah. I'm not sure where Atlas is out of. I think they're out of California. California. Yeah. But they both assemble in the USA. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so the Atlas has three options with 300, 400, and 500 mile range. Pretty good. Uh, zero to 65 seconds. Let's be honest. I mean, when you're buying a truck, it's nice to have one that's super fast. Five seconds is quick for it's a truck. It's plenty fast. Like most diesel trucks that like you see blown by you with plumes of smoke behind them, they're not. They're five in the seconds. sixes. Yeah. So. So it's, and, and then they're plenty fast. Like they're nice plenty trucks. Fast. Yeah, you don't need more than that. That's pretty good. Now what I thought was interesting is they have different um, uh, towing capacity yeah. and payload capacity options. So you've got... 6,000, 10,000, 14,000, and 17,000 trailer hitch towing capacities. And your payload capacities are 1,000, 2,000, 3,500, and 5,000 uh, pounds. Obviously, That's you need lot. to decide what's important for you. What are you gonna use it for? Do you use it for work? Are you gonna be towing, uh, you know, you're gonna put a bunch of uh, stuff in the back that weighs a ton? And you're going to need that to, you yeah. know that payload then yes you need it right you can tow up to 17,000 pounds that's a big trailer well you got to think about it i mean people that are buying this truck these are not your one ton buyers these are your people who are buying the half ton maybe a three quarter ton truck yep. and a half ton pickup in, like in the american trucks right now you know they're just they're just over 10. yep so if you can have that i think you know you can slide in and definitely steal some of that pie Starting at six thousand, yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty good. It's not terrible. I mean, it's pretty good. Now these vehicles are priced pretty well. They start at forty five thousand. You've also got two different options for ground clearance: twelve inches and fifteen inches. It's pretty good. That's yeah. great. There's no uh, there's no uh, uh, drive line underneath those trucks, so you definitely get some added uh, height there for sure, which is pretty cool. I, I love Atlas. I do too. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what they've got coming. If I was to buy an electric truck, I'll be honest, it would be hard for me to decide. <laughs> I don't like the Cybertruck, I'm not going to lie. Well, I got mine on order. The so. capabilities are great. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. They're freaking ugly as sin. It's just not for me. But for, for some him, it's a marketing piece. I get it. It <laughs> That's is. Come on, man. 100%. <laughs> anyway, cool. I, I like the Atlas. It's cool. Two other things I want to mention about the Atlas. Massive front roads, front trunk storage i don't know the details on that i apologize yeah. and a million mile life of the battery well and uh, that's pretty amazing i mean looking at like there was a guy recently who has a model s mm -hmm. and he has a, he, a million i think it's a million kilometers so technically not miles but right. that's like what that'd be 600 miles that's a ton like that's a lot like uh, there's a guy in, in the tesla forum that i'm part of that's got a, a model s and older i think it's a 13 it's got like uh, like five or 600,000 miles on his. And that's pretty amazing. And, and I know that Elon right now, they're, they're really trying to push the million mile battery. Yeah. And the it's million mile drivetrain. They're not there yet, it's but I, well. I think within the next few years it mm -hmm. will be. Yeah. And so it's pretty cool. I mean, I think there's definitely a lot less moving parts in electric in, uh, a motor. Yeah. And so you definitely are afforded more comfort when it comes to not having to spend a boatload of money on your drivetrain. A million mile life. That's crazy. How long is it going to last you? Well, think about it. I mean, if you drive a car, That's how much you use it? Two hundred, like what? My car right now is a two thousand eleven. It's got eighty two thousand miles. I would say the average driver. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the <coughs> exact, but it's probably around ten thousand miles a year. Yeah, it's like twelve or something like that. So maybe twelve, right? Yeah. So it's a long time. A million miles. That's you could be. I gotta do the math. I gotta do the math. My you could be buying a year for having to sell it. Like <laughs> oh. you drive. You drive until it dies. That's that's literally, and that's there for that. With the price, when you compare it to a million mile battery, yeah, it's cheap. Yep, it's so cheap. 
Okay, next one on my list. Oh, oh don't you do probably that. have heard of the last two. If you have any interest in electrics, you've, you've probably heard of them. That's this one I kind of doubt you have. It's called yeah. Lightning. It's out of uh, not China. America. Yeah, they're out of China. They're getting started in China. And they're doing a pretty good job. They're definitely stealing some market share there. They are. Yeah. The interesting thing, they've got a couple really beautiful looking vehicles. They're insane. They're insane. Yeah. A really kind of a small crossover type. It's called the M Byte. Yep. It starts at fifty thousand. That's not a bad price for an electric crossover SUV, if, especially if it's got the tech that they're expecting it to be. Because they they're saying that it's going to be better than anything Tesla's put out. Their technology is better, right? Yeah. So we're we're going to find out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the interior of that car is like it's to die for. Okay, so you brought up tech. the interior. One of the things that's really interesting about the interior is the display. Uh-huh, yeah. We've got a huge 48-inch display. 48 inches. 48, 48 inches. I didn't, I didn't know that's like the for... width of the car. That's, that's like this TV right here. That's, yeah, it 43 is. In, oh, that's, that's insane. 48-inch display. And then a 7-inch tablet that's kind of built into the, so, into the steering wheel. What you're telling me is I can watch a movie here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> be playing video games on this big house. Absolutely, you can. <laughs> now you can customize cool. what you have up on that forty-inch that would display. Be it could be weather. It could be the news. It could be stocks. Oh it could gosh. be whatever is interesting to you. But you can also customize how much of that you want to see while you're driving. Because obviously, yeah. you want to be safe. Yeah, I thought that's, that's cool. It's that's really a, cool. It's a really cool idea. I, my opinion, I have to see it. I would love to drive one uh-huh. in person and see it in person. We will. I think the 48-inch display... Too much? A little overwhelming. Yes. I, I think it'd be distracting, even if you minimize, because the displays, it kind of sticks up a little. I'm a short guy. It, it does. A taller guy would be okay. A short person like but, me, I mean, it's very... It's, well, consider this. I mean, my, in my test, my Model S, the screen is 17 inches, and it yeah. sits up like this. Right. And it's, and it's kind of distracting. A little bit. But my, my instrument cluster is right here, and it's all you know digital. Oh, well, the Model 3 is like nice. that. It sticks out a little bit, too. And it's a little higher. I don't think it's excessive. I think, I, could, I think I could handle that. Yeah. This Byton one might be a little bit, but you decide. to find out. You decide. What do you think? You think it's too much? I mean, it's Not cool. Enough. Might be too much. Let us know what you think in the comments, for sure. 150 kilowatt DC fast charging charges to 80% in about 35 minutes. That's pretty cool. That's about what I think that's about what Tesla does right now. Yep. Yeah. The the Byton is a two row SUV. In uh, the second row can be either two or three person configurations. I think it's pretty similar in size, to like the Mach E, right? Like when we look yep. at the specs, it's about the similar size of that. So yep. it's pretty good. I would say you could compare that to a lot of the like the Audi SUVs that are out right yeah. now, like your Q3, your Q5. Yeah, you can buy them in the two or the three uh, seater yeah, configurations. Yeah. Like we looked at the Porsche Taycan a couple days ago. Taycan, excuse me. <laughs> don't, don't tell me. I don't want to be as bad as that spokesman. <laughs> no, that was terrible. <laughs> anyway, but uh, it, it was it was two it was two seats in the back. But you know, anyway, we won't talk too much about the Porsche Taycan. But it was pretty. But it was pretty. I, I like this better. I really like the the Byton right. better so far. Zero to sixty yeah. in the all-wheel drive version, five point five seconds. Pretty good. And they've got two battery options, seventy-two and ninety-five kilowatts, which is we calculated about two hundred sixty-seven or three hundred forty-two miles of range. One thing to consider about the battery, and this is something that just just came to me, is uh, the battery itself because they're smaller batteries. I mean, because in like in my car, it's a sixty kilowatt hour battery. What remind me of the size again? Seventy-two or ninety-five. So the 95, and that's a pretty good size battery, but you got to think about like the smaller battery we have, the better because then there's not as much of a carbon footprint when you produce the battery to begin with, mm-hmm. and it's going to be better for the environment. So if you can if you can do that, if you can build the efficiency, and that I really think is why Byton is, you know, they feel so strongly about how well they're going to do. Yeah, they feel they're coming out swinging, and so I'm kind of curious to see what that ends up being. If that's it really good is efficiency, good. 342 yeah. miles out of 95 kilowatts. That's pretty decent. That's good. Yeah. Okay, really quickly, then they've got a, a sedan called the K-Byte. Kind of an interesting look. Yeah. $45,000. Reminds me of Tron. Yes. <laughs> uh, those little things, on, is, it, is, it, is it a Google Earth car? I don't know. <laughs> well, the front end is like, the front end is, is just like, it's got this like, it almost reminded me of like a Cybertruck. Yeah. Mated with like a, uh, a Honda Accord, like the brand new Honda Accords. Yeah. It's just got like this weird, like, I mean, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. We'll, send, we'll put some pictures up so you can see it, but yep. I like it. It's, it's a pretty good looking car. It's a really quick, uh, kind of the same configuration as the m just a sedan. Has 470 horsepower or 516 foot-pounds of torque. It's 
It's pretty good. All right. And that's then that's from coming from a company that's you know according according to the U.S. It's like non-existent, right? But it's it's coming. They're out. Chinese now. It's all ch- out of China, but they do have plans to expand to the U.S. I believe yeah. next year, 2020. They're coming. So. Look, if you're looking for something that's not a big car, you want just something that's efficient, but you don't like a you don't like a, um, a Nissan Leaf or you don't want a, a Chevy Bolt because yeah, it's a little they're bigger. <laughs> you know, uh, the M bite might be for you. The K bite might be for you. Biden's got some interesting things. But for me, I'm more interested in Fisker. I love. I don't know where I was going next. I love the Fisker Ocean, <laughs> dude. The Fisker Ocean. It kind of reminds me of like a new Land Rover Discovery, like the the yes. chiseled corners. I mean, it's it's a smaller. Well, it's slightly bigger than like your M bike, uh, like SUV, and it, it's it's got a really cool look to it. It does, and I'll show you. We'll show some pictures. One of the things I thought was interesting. It's little things sometimes that that are really intriguing. They have some, they just have some great technology they're working on. Mm-hmm. Well, again, we'll do some follow-up with everything that these guys are doing. Um, but one of the things I thought was interesting, it's just, like I said, it's a little thing sometimes that you like about a car. That's what she said. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I had a Toyota 4Runner, and one of the things I liked about it was with the push of a button, I could push down the back window. Yeah. This one has that. That's cool. I'm not going to buy it solely because Let's of that. Take no Tesla. But it's cool. It's cool. My That's favorite on the part, Fisker Ocean, the, the crossover SUV. My favorite part about the Fisker has nothing to do with technology and everything to do with the price because it's cheap. It is. It's so cheap. Okay, so and, and I watched an interview that they, they did with him uh, with, with Fisker a few days ago and where is he coming from? Well, he's coming from an almost exact opposite way of Tesla did. Really? Tesla started with the most expensive vehicles, uh-huh. right? Fisker's starting with stuff that's affordable for the masses. How affordable? $37.5 for the Fisker Ocean. That's incredible. And Tesla's, you know, they're done with their federal tax credit, so it's uh-huh. expired. These new companies are just starting with their, with their EVs. Yep. They're going to get, is it seven years I think they get? Or is it nine? I, I don't know. I know they have a certain I cap. I can't remember how many years. I think it's nine or ten years they get the $7,500 tax credit. So you're eligible for that. So now by the time you're done with that, they're it's advertising 30. you can get it for under $29,999. 30 grand? Dude, you can't buy for an electric. You can't buy a Honda Accord for that. Woo, and we're, I we're tell talking you. like, I mean, this is a beautiful. It is fully tech. Now it's not a huge SUV, so but I don't it's know if decent. it fit my family's needs, but it'd be great for a commuter vehicle. I bet it's pretty comparable to like an Explorer or something, and that would fit. I don't know families. if it's quite that big. I'd probably compare it to um, a Toyota Rav4. Maybe all I know is I'm interested in it. Like I'm ready to trade in my freaking Model S, man. You can lease grand. it for how much? Too little. Three hundred seventy-nine bucks a month, dude. dude. I'm about ready to sign up. I'm just. Anyway, so think about it. So like, so right now there's there's a few companies and we've kind of already alluded to that a couple of times now twice. Um, so Fisker and Rivian both have a, a subscription model. So um, Rivian's referring to it as a subscription. Fisker's referring to it as a as a lease. Mm-hmm. And with with Rivian, it's seven hundred bucks. That includes your insurance. That includes yeah. uh, maintenance yep. and the cost of the vehicle. Yep. And you're perpetually leasing it. And f- the cool thing, the thing I love, love, love about the idea behind Fisker doing their leasing. Is that it's a month to month, dude? They have there's no rules. Oh, I didn't know. And that. it's thirty thousand miles a year. I'm learning new things too. Thirty thousand miles a freaking year. Like, mm. I mean, you, you could freaking oh. drive this car as an Uber car. Uh, an Uber know. car for three hundred and seventy nine dollars a month. Thirty. By the time you get your federal tax credit, you're thirty, 30 grand. grand. Yeah. It's Dang. it's pretty crazy. Sorry, Fisker. I'm in love with it. Eighty code up battery too. pack gets you three hundred miles. The reason it's called the ocean is because the, the interior is made out of recycled materials. They're taking materials out of the ocean, yeah. recycled fishing nets, recycled bottles, I can't remember what else, but I like that because it's like I think think about it, like think about it, I mean there's a lot of people who are afraid to buy electrics because of all of the horrible things that they're doing for the environment. When I mean if you do the research, it's really not as terrible as it as it looks. Yeah. But when you put a manufacturer like this who is focusing on it from a very different perspective, that's pretty honorable. I like that. And I think a lot of people will get behind them just for that. And 30 grand. And 30 grand. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. And really oh, quick. Boy. 
They just announced a new vehicle. Well, okay. It's they didn't really announce it. Yeah. They Twitter teased it and then he deleted it right away. There's a new truck coming out called the Alaska. He just put it out there on Twitter three days ago and he deleted it, so we don't know any details. I'm sorry. It was, it was like probably word. leaked on purpose just to get some excitement going. Mm-hmm. Guarantee it was. So he like claimed the, it was an accident. You don't do that by accident. So that's the Alaska. So I mean, it, Alaska. chances are, I mean, if it's if it's anything like the ocean, it's probably going to slide in right under the Cybertruck price, price point. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, um, Fisker won't start building these vehicles, well, we know the ocean, until the end of 2021. Yeah. So we're a ways away. They may miss the boat a little bit. And that's okay. Tesla's already out with their Model 3. They're already, the Y is coming out next month. They start coming out. Well, so, but, you know, at 30 grand, there might be a lot of people sign on to that when it comes out. Especially if they're holding out. I think it was them that had the $250 buy-in. Like their reservation price was 250 bucks. So one thing that the Tesla's done over the years is they've had a, a pre-order price that you, you pay a little bit of money and you pre-order your car. Yep. And that, that like helps set the bar for how many they need to uh, manufacture. But a bigger thing is it's like a loan. You're giving them a loan yep. to be building right. your crowdfunding. It's all money. It's capital money. And it's, it's a really good way of doing business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like at the price point that they're at, you're going to have a lot of people like... Well, Rivian's doing it. It's $1,000. Other companies that I'm going to mention here, and then also do it as well. Yeah, I like it. It's cool. It's it's a cool idea. Okay, I saved one for you. So the one that I've got is uh, something that I I, I I love. We recently we, we have a friend who recently actually posted a video like behind the scenes. It was so cool. I what is about it? Jumped out of my seat. They yeah, like, like Nicola Badger. Nicola Motors. Yep. Like brand new company. Brand new. I mean. They they've been around for a little bit, but as far as like the the like where they're at now, like brand new basically. So it's an electric range. It, it's coupled with it's, it's it's battery coupled with fuel sec- fuel so cell technology. technology, which I know nothing about. But it's cool. The, you know, it's one thing we know. And the range is six hundred miles. Six hundred. Six hundred miles. The thing is. What could you do with six hundred miles? You could go. Oh, okay. Here here's the reason I think this is important. Okay, here's my, now I'm commenting on your boy. The reason I do find this very intriguing is towing capacity. Towing towing capability. Because the one problem that EVs have, Mm -hmm. if you're towing 7,000 or 10,000 pounds, yes, your range might be theoretically 400 miles. No, it's... If you're towing, it's cut in half. At least that. Yeah. At least that. I mean, 600 miles, like we're in Utah, Driving to California, depending on where you're going, is roughly 700 miles. Well, especially if you're going up some hills. So you could you go up hills, maybe you get even more. You could maybe get you know halfway to California before you have to charge, um, and that's that's pretty cool. But 600 miles is pretty incredible. So that's what I like about the Nikola Badger. Do I really need to go 600 miles in one trip without stopping? I can't do that. I got to stop and use a restroom and mm-hmm. grab some food. Yeah. But if I'm towing, you're going to lose that. And they say it's 600. And, and I, I get, get 300 or 400. I'm happy <laughs> as hell. <laughs> you won't get it, but maybe. I'm just maybe saying. Let's say you get half. That's exciting though. Like it's and it's cool to see. Like there's there's been other like fuel cell te- fuel cell technology vehicles um, out there, but they they really don't get widely accepted because I think it's like a fear of the unknown. Yeah. But I feel like introducing an electric vehicle coupled with that fuel cell technology. You're going to have people who are more willing to try it. Yep. And there's a lot of people who believe wholly in fuel cell technology yep. and less in the electric. And so it'll be interesting to see over the next like five to 10 years uh, where that equalizes. Does it, does it equalize on the side of uh, electric or on the side of fuel cell? Well, we're going to find out. Let's start a new trend. It could be pretty cool. I don't know. I mean, Toyota is really into fuel cell technology. I think the coolest part about like right now, the whole reason we're making this video is there's so much happening in the world of technology, the world of automotive. This one, no one realizes. blew my mind this week. It's pretty crazy because we knew about some other ones coming out, and so when other, somebody else comes out with something just like it, it's like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, this is new. When somebody comes out with something 600 mile range, mm-hmm. and it's from electric with fuel set technology, that is intriguing. So I've got to say, if I was going to buy a truck, and I don't know the price of this, well, that's that's where that's where things get a little different. So the Nikola Badger, its main competition is the Cybertruck and the GMC 
Hummer EV. If you haven't heard of the Hummer EV, we'll do another follow-up video Wait, on that. Wait, Hummer's coming back? Hummer EV. What? Yes, they're making, they're they're making a comeback. So the price point on this, and this is where you know you got to decide: do you love the idea of a fuel cell, or do you, or the, the the extended range of a battery? Because I mean, the other vehicles we've already touched on won't touch 600 miles, even non towing. Right. But when you when you have this car, I mean, you're, you're definitely you pay a premium for it. Yep. It's gonna. There's not really. There's not enough information about it quite yet because it's still brand it's new. Got announced. I think it's yesterday, new. like literally 21 hours ago, Fox put a, an article out there. So like it's yeah. brand new. Yeah. Um, Sixty to ninety thousand. So it, it, that's about where the Cybertruck was supposed to come in at, and that you know, in the mid to higher range of that. So the Atlas and the Rivians are gonna be so. So it's it's not, it's not out there. It's but to get pretty hundred mile range. Yeah. Yeah, is it worth sixty grand? Especially where a full Ford F one hundred and fifty fully loaded Platinum. Speaking is that of, price anyway, right? Speaking of F one hundred and fifty, so one thing to consider here: you got you got to compare this against one specific vehicle, and and, it, and the the Badger is comparable to the styling of a Raptor. Yeah. And so if you're looking at a Raptor, if if that's already in your in your wheelhouse, you're already considering maybe that's your next move. That price point is there anyway. You're already considering that price, yeah. But you're getting ridiculous. I mean, 600 miles range. I guarantee you're going to have one kick-ass motor. It's going to be like a three seconds zero to sixty. Yeah. And yeah. And it's going to be just as good or better looking than the Raptor. I mean, the Raptor, in my opinion, is the best looking Ford truck that they put out. Oh, the Badger looks pretty awesome. But Ford is the best looking Ford truck they put out. Yes. So the Badger, like, yeah. ah, it's, it's a rock star. Yep. I'm excited. I am too. So there you go. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, we don't yeah, know yeah. a lot of details yet. Like I don't think anyone knows. They kind of teased a bunch about it. But there's not a lot of details yet. So yeah. we'll, we're gonna hope to get our hands on one here shortly. Pay attention, like we said. Subscribe. Do Make sure you do it. So so far, I mean, we're just gonna like recap kind of here. So like, of the cars we've we've mentioned so far, like which one's your favorite? Like, if you had any amount of money, what would you get? What would you get? Because Brian would get the next car. Mine would be, I gotta tell you, I'm really excited about this next car. No, you're not. Dude, I am. <laughs> the Lucid Air. Lucid? Lucid. Lucid. They're out of California. I'm not Lucid very often. No, you're not Lucid <laughs> very often at all. <laughs> now, another another American company, is that what you're telling yeah. me? Yeah. So, so there's a total of four American companies in our list. Is that right? That I can think of. <laughs> I'm probably a missing a couple. That's pretty cool. Uh, probably more common we don't know about. That's pretty cool. I mean, we know Volkswagen. They've got a ton of electric coming. Now, we know Ford has are they some. all going to stick around? We don't know. I mean... It takes a lot to start up a company like this. But, I mean... For real. Rivian has tons of investment from Ford and Amazon. Uh -huh. Amazon's building out a whole fleet of electric vehicles. With if that. they fail, with them. they've... So, you've got the backing the there. The other ones, I don't know what kind of backing they have. So, mm -hmm. it might be harder to stick around. But if they can make a vehicle that's exciting that draws in the interest, that gets a lot of sales, and can compete with Tesla, because Tesla's obviously proven themselves mm -hmm. out, then they can stick around. And the Lucid Air is like a different kind of car too. It's not okay. like your cheap entry-level car. And that's... Horsepower. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> don't, don't. All I have to say is horsepower. <laughs> so think about this, right? Think about, think about the one car that you can think of right now it's got a thousand horsepower, and how much money did it cost to make that kind of horsepower? Ferraris don't have a thousand horsepower. Lamborghinis don't have some. Some of them do. But you're 900. you're looking at your Bugattis, your Rimax, your um, uh, you know, as far as stock uh -huh. from from the factory vehicles with over a thousand horsepower. That's what you're looking at. Uh, Koenigsegg. So you're talking right? like those are million dollars. Exactly. Vehicles. We're talking like the bare the bare minimum to get anything even close to this is like. Bugatti's order of a million. Four million dollars. Yes. Yeah. So you Home can zigs are that expensive. You can get somewhere close in the in the neighborhood of two hundred fifty thousand or like five million. So thousand where, horsepower. Where is this crazy expensive? Two car versions, from? but they start at sixty two thousand. That's crazy. zero to sixty. Two point five seconds. That's that's dangerous. Tesla. P100D with ludicrous <clears throat> mode speed. That's dangerous. It's not as fast as the new, I would say it's not as fast as the new Roadster that's coming out. Yeah. The new Tesla Roadster will well, 1.9 seconds. But a Roadster is a different kind of car Yeah. And it's a coupe. It's a the coupe. cool thing about this car is that it's, you do get a lot for the money. 
it's it's more expensive than the other you know than the other cars we've looked at but for sixty two thousand dollars the style wise if you're comparing it to a model s you can't buy a model s for that price this this car is absolutely stunning uh -huh. inside it is now. 100% beautiful. Oh, yeah. Interior is amazing. Giggity. I want to see one in person, <laughs> but I'm just drooling over from pictures. Uh -huh. um, but watch some videos online about it. We'll share some info. Mm -hmm. it, it's got just every executive, just creature comfort you can think of. Think of Rolls Royce. Think of Bentleys that people hire chauffeurs uh -huh. to drive them around in. That's what this Lucid Air is. Obviously, you have some fun in it yourself. <laughs> you want to go zero to 60, two and a half seconds. It really is. But it's the type of vehicle that for an executive, that typically you're buying $120,000 BMW M8s 100%. or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those really Audi A8, those executive level cars. Oh, sorry. The car that really compares to the most as far as gasoline engine car is your Mercedes S series. Okay. It's got the interior cabin space, mm -hmm. the creature comforts feel. Speaking of cabin, sixty-two thousand. What about that roof, dude? Yeah, dude, it's got a hundred percent panoramic roof. roof. Yep, and it's got. I mean, like the the pillars on the roof. Just, I mean, you can see them kind of, but like, there's no like, there's no cross member. Like, I don't know how they do it. The technology is nutty, insane, but it's freaking beautiful, and I want one. We're teasing you guys now again. Like I said. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Definitely. We're not like every other channel. Yes. We're doing some interesting things. We're more cool. And we will bring you, we're planning to bring more you news. upfront and personal oh, news yeah. on this Lucid Air very soon. So now we want to know what you think. Brian, Brian says he wants the Lucid Air. If he could have any car, All right. he wants the Lucid Air. Okay, so there's three vehicles on this list that really intrigued me. For the family SUV, I love that Rivian. It's a uh -huh. big SUV. It reminds me of like a Chevy Tahoe type uh -huh. of size, and that's what we need. For, I've got, we've got four kids. You got seventeen Too kids. Many. <laughs> I you mean, want a couple of them. <laughs> but you know, we need we need that room. We like to travel. You know, we go go visit family out of state. We go. You, uh -huh. got, you love to travel. You guys travel all the time. I like that. I like the room of the Rivian, uh -huh. and to do it in electric with four hundred miles of range. Now, a little pricey. One I want is probably gonna be around a hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. Okay, and that's where and that's where mine comes in. Like my my pick, if I were to pick one right now, um, an all around car that would that would fit my family at least. Like maybe not all the family necessarily, but like enough that if we needed to go on a quick road trip, and I would love the freaking Fisker Ocean. Okay, that's my next one. I was to say, Dude. man, for affordable, just yeah, going around town car. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not gonna have zero sixty of of. You know, ludicrous mode, P one hundred D Tesla for thirty grand. Or lucid air, but dude. for thirty grand. Oh my gosh, dude! You can't do better. It's than interesting. That. You really can't. Thirty grand mm -hmm. uh, again. That's with your tax credit, but. So, what's your third favorite, Bri? Boy, lucid air, mm -hmm. man. If I was, if I was in the range of a Mercedes S class buyer, and I'm looking for my next car. You know, your Audi A8 buyer, your top of line BMW mm -hmm. uh, M uh, eight series buyer. Um, I'd be looking at this Lucid Air, especially if you got a hundred grand. Of course, I, I did like that Porsche Taycan as far as it was performance okay. and stuff. But it was okay. this is pretty much everything you want in a car if you if you can afford that price point. Mm -hmm. If you can afford that price point, and you're not have to buy a Tesla. I mean, Teslas are awesome. We're not we're not discounting Tesla. Yeah. Boy, this Lucid Air is extremely intriguing. Mm -hmm. Well, those are our favorites, and we're curious what you think. Please leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you think, what your favorite car is, and if you had a boatload of cash, maybe you won the lottery tomorrow, what car would you pick? What is the best thing for your family? Um, and what video should we do next? Give us an idea. If we could focus on one of these cars to do a video on, which one would be your favorite? And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and always, and always, 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 Click the bell, and, and then check your, check your fluid. Check your fluid. <laughs>